Hey everyone, um, so we're back in the hood today to show you guys how to do the reduction of benzophenone. Um, let's start by introducing our reactants today. So here is our benzophenone. Uh, this is a slightly granular white solid. Um, and the most important part of this benzophenone today is its ketone group, which we are going to be reducing with the help of some sodium borohydride over here. Um, so the first step in our reaction is to dissolve our benzophenone into two milliliters of methanol. And this can be done just by shaking for a minute. So benzophenone has those two big uh, phenyl rings in its structure. And so it's gonna be rather nonpolar. Methanol has a moderate polarity and so it's able to dissolve a wide range of substances. And that's one of the reasons that we're using it today. The other reason that we're using methanol is because it's an aprotic solvent. So when I introduce this sodium borohydride into the system, it's going to provide hydrogen uh, anions or hydrides. And those hydrides are going to be highly reactive with protons, like the ones that are freely available in water. So if I dumped this sodium borohydride into a protic solvent like water, uh, this wouldn't actually react with anything that I wanted to, it would just react with the water. Um, but if I do it in an aprotic solvent like this, it will not react with the methanol and it will react with the benzophenone that I wanted to. So I'm gonna fold this into a cute little taco and I'm gonna add the sodium oral hydride about a half at a time. And what we'll see when the sodium borohydride gets in there is we see some bubbles forming in solution. Now, methanol is an aprotic solvent, like I said, but it's unavoidable. There's always going to be a little bit of trace water around or something with a proton that those hydrides can react with. And so the hydrides are finding some random protons throughout the system and they're reacting with them to form hydrogen gas. That hydrogen gas, um, if you produce too much of it at a time, can actually be dangerous because it's highly flammable. At the scale that we're working at in this lab, and in the complete absence of a heat source, I'm not worried about the flammability too much, but always something to be aware of when using sodium boral hydride. I've got a little bit plastered on the uh, side of the test tube here, so I'm just gonna crawl some liquid along the side and try to collect that. There we go. And so this reaction is going to continue to react and bubble for probably about the next five minutes or so, um, but the reaction is going to continue to proceed for about 20 minutes. Um, at which time I would expect this bubbling to have died down completely uh, and the benzophenone should have all been reduced to its alcohol product. Um, so at that time, we're gonna come back and show you guys the workup for how we collect that product. Okay, so here's our uh, reduced benzophenone reaction uh, after that 20 minute wait time. I've also had it sitting in a little ice water bath for uh, five or 10 minutes here, just to get it nice and cold. And what I hope to see is upon the addition of half mil of water, half mil of ice water here, I would hope to see that uh, alcohol product precipitate. And I want that solution to get nice and cloudy. So I see a couple little solids floating around. 
put that back on ice for a moment and come back once we see solids. Uh, one thing when you are collecting by vacuum filtration, make sure you can see the solids in your solution before uh, transferring it to your filter apparatus. If it's all liquid, it's just gonna get sucked right through and you're gonna lose your product completely. So we are back um, after our 20 minute wait period. Um, in order to quench the reaction or to use up any of the rain remaining sodium borohydride, I've added a milliliter of ice water here. Um, and you can see that our alcohol product has formed and it's that white pasty solid uh, which is clouding up our solution here. So as per the instructions, uh, just to make sure that we are getting the full precipitation of our products, I'm going to add another half mil of ice water and get that nice and cold. And now that we have our solid, we can uh, collect our product by vacuum filtration using this cute little Hirsch funnel. We're going to turn on that noisy vacuum. Perfect. And to adhere that filter paper to the Hirsch funnel, I'm going to use a little bit of cold water. Just a few drops. And pour our mixture in. And it is not pouring super well for me. I'm going to need to scrape it out with a spatula. Uh, 
with that, you guys should be able to prove that the reaction was successful. Uh, so thank you for watching and good luck with your work.